hoping you'd be around to catch this, dude. This is the good stuff right here. Look at this. This is classic. Only in Hawaii, baby. What's going on guys? Welcome to this channel. Thanks so much for tuning in. If you're the type of person who usually gives thumbs up on these videos, then please go ahead and give this video a thumbs up now before you forget. I'd really appreciate that. And if you're not subscribed, hit the red subscribe button down below and you'll get more awesome videos like this on a more notified, regular basis. So in this one, I'm gonna talk about how you can live your life in a permanent state of vacation. I'm gonna give you a bit of backstory on my life and how I've gotten to where I am now. Uh, I started working for the man, you know, getting my 9 to 5 paycheck or whatever when I was like 16. I worked at the Burger Shack. After high school, I'd go flip burgers at A&W. And uh, before work every day, I'd get stoned and go in there and just have the munchies and eat while the boss wasn't looking. And I remember one time I grabbed a french fry and I quickly went to go throw it in my mouth before she turned around and I stabbed myself in the eye with it. I was like, oh God, karma. Like, don't try and take junk food when the boss isn't looking, you know? So I worked at the Burger Shack. I also worked at the movie theater. I made pizzas at the movie theater. I also uh, worked landscaping, so I picked weeds. That was a really cool summer job. I made a lot of money picking weeds. Uh, I, uh, I also worked at the car lot, at the car dealership. I learned to drive standard, actually, driving a Porsche, because in order to get the job, you had, to have, you had to drive standard. And I told the guy, like, yeah, I drive standard, no problem. Because my friend's like, dude, just tell me you drive standard, no worries. And then when you get the job, if you, there's, no st there's no standard cars anyway on the, on the lot, so it's okay. I was like, yeah, true, there are no standard cars here, so I can, I'll just tell him I drive standard, no worries. And then we started getting some standard cars, and one of the standard cars we got was a Porsche, and I needed to learn standard. So I, get, my boss was like, hey, man, can you go move that Porsche? And I went and sat down on the Porsche, and I'm like, standard? Shit. I quickly got out of the uh, car, went to my little office, went in Google, typed how to drive standard, and it was little how-to websites came up, and... I was like, okay, put the brake foot there and then pull this and pull that. Okay, I gotta go try to remember that. And then got up, went and drove standard and moved the car and it was cool. And what else, where else have I worked? I guess I also worked at a gym doing personal training at Good Life Fitness. I also worked for myself doing personal training, both physically in person and then also online. I did some health and nutrition and lifestyle coaching via Skype. And now I'm currently editing videos. Editing videos is my bread and butter. I still do some mentoring with people over Skype, but I'm really bad with appointments. I, I love deadlines, deadlines are cool. So knowing something is due on a certain date, and knowing something has to be in by a certain date, that's cool with me. But like having to be somewhere at a certain time in the future is like really hard for me to do. So like dentist appointments or whatever, yoga appointments or workout appointments with someone, I'm not really good at, unless it's like the same time every week, boom, 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 boom. Um, but if it's like a crapshoot, different time, I'm really bad at that. So that's how I've earned money. And up until age like 22, I'd say, I re didn't really have any expenses. My, I lived with my parents. Uh, they paid for my food. They paid for my schooling. Um, they paid for some of the clothes I needed, mostly. My only expenses were like, you know, going out and having some junk food every now and then, or maybe like buying some drugs or whatever. Uh, but every time I went and bought drugs, I bought extra and I sold it to my friends. So I actually like made money every time I got high myself. But uh, yeah, I've always, I've, always, um, I've always had some source of income after the age of 16 and I haven't had many expenses. So I just kept saving, 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 saving. And then right before I left Canada, I sold my fruit selling business. I had a, I had a wholesale fruit business happening in my garage. People from around the neighborhood would come up to my garage and I'd sell them wholesale fruit. I had a really good price, a little markup there. So it was good for them, good for me. I got my fruit basically paid for free. When I started eating like a lot of fruit, my mom was like, all right, Ted, you're gonna have to pay for it yourself. And I was like, well, I gotta buy bulk. So I started buying bulk and then I was like, well, I'll divvy this up and sell it to other people around here. And when the word got out and every week we'd have like 20 people rolling up to the garage and buying a lot of fruit. And then before I left Canada, I sold that business to someone and they took over that. And um, I took that lump sum and I just, added it to my savings. I also sold my car and added that to my savings. I also sold everything I owned to become a minimalist. I sold everything that wouldn't fit in my backpack. So if it didn't fit in my backpack, it was getting sold or given away or garbage, whatever. So we had a garage sale and a bunch of stuff got sold there. Went on eBay, went on Amazon, no, not, not Amazon, eBay and then Craigslist and just sold everything. So I've just saved up a whole bunch of money 
and um, haven't had any much expenses until now to, that really diminish that savings. But I've also been focusing a lot of online, working a lot online. So I've sold eBooks, I've sold um, courses for other people like affiliate stuff, I've sold tickets to uh, retreats and festivals, I've had my own retreat, I've gone to festivals, I've been paid to come to festivals and I just do all sorts of different little odd jobs here and there and bring in little bits of money here and there. Um, but my main gig now, like I said, is mostly video editing for people. So every morning I'll wake up and I'll meditate and then I will go to the gym and then I'll come home, eat some fruit and then I'll get to work on editing videos, either my own videos or videos for other people. And I'm constantly posting ads on places like Craigslist or Kijiji or whatever and just advertising my services saying, hey, I'll edit your videos, you send me the clips, I'll send you the final product right back to you, no problem. And there's a lot of work out there for people who want to edit videos. So I've been fortunate enough to have a portfolio already. If you guys want to check out my video portfolio, click the link in the description and you'll see what kind of work I can produce. And if you want me to edit your videos, then let me know, hit me up and I'll edit your video for you. Um, so I'm putting in work to earn some money. So when I say I'm on a, in permanent vacation, it may look like I'm in permanent vacation because I'm not like having the vlog turned around on me while I'm editing these videos. Although I guess I could, but it'd be kind of boring just seeing me edit videos all day. So I show you like the cool stuff where I'm going out eating fruit with friends or I'm going out to the waterfalls or what have you. Um, and it may look like I'm not doing anything, but when the camera's not on the fun stuff, I'm doing like the nit and gritty stuff. You know, I'm getting back to emails, I'm getting back to phone calls, I'm sending files off, I'm downloading files, I'm waiting for this to export, I'm waiting for this to upload, what have you. And it's just the, it's just the nit and gritty, it's just the way, it's just the way she goes. Um, it's like that grind. But it's the work I love to do. I wouldn't want to do any other work really. I love doing what I do. And so I get a lot of offers, people emailing me, saying, hey, can you edit my video? Can you do this? Can you do this? Can you do this for me? I'm like, no, 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 no. I'm very selective with the work I choose to do because thankfully there is a lot of work out there and I can have the ability to pick the, the good jobs I want. Um, but the point is, what I'm saying is that I don't have to do shit that I don't want to do to earn money. I just don't do shit I don't want to do. I only do the things I want to do. Uh, in two instances where that's not true is that uh, like I have to leave America. I don't want to leave America, but I have to because my, my visa um, is running out. So that's one example of something that I'm doing that I don't want to do. And then another thing I guess I don't sometimes want to do, but I have to do is, uh, you know, pay like fees and fines and taxes and things like that. I'm like, oh, whatever, just take it. I'd rather like not pay the car park fine that I got for parking here, but I'll pay it anyway. Some people dispute it and stuff, but I'd really not dispute, I'd really not argue, I'd just like pay the fine, pay the fee, whatever. Or my bank fee, my bank charges me like 10 bucks a month, like some monthly fee, and I'm like, God damn, all right, just take that. Some PayPal fees, like I don't wanna pay the PayPal fees, but I got it. Anyways, you get the example. Most things I do in life, like 99.9% .9 of the things I do in life, I do it because I want to. I make this video because I want to, not because I have to. So that's that. I took some notes for this video just so I can not forget anything. Uh, oh yeah, so to give you an example of what my life looks like, I kind of briefly told you that already. I'll wake up, I'll meditate, I'll go to the gym, I'll eat some fruit, I'll work on some video editing, um, I'll maybe do some Skype mentoring with people, uh, I'll do some filming, I'll go out and film some, some friends of mine, make a little video here and there, uh, or do a photo shoot with someone just to work on my, my, I'll work on my portfolio. Um, and then I'm brainstorming new projects all the time. I'll call people up and brainstorm, shoot the shit with people for like 30, 45 minutes, ask them what they think of this project or if they we want to team up and do this or that. Um, so I'm constantly working on like the next project. And uh, then I'm just like kicking it, hanging out with friends. Like we'll go to the waterfalls, we'll hang out together, we'll watch a movie together perhaps. Or we'll go to the beaches together. Um, we'll go uh, just for a nice walk together, whatever. And just, we'll just hang out with friends. I do that like every single day because I'm living with friends. Um, and then I get to bed pretty early and I try to wake up early. I mean, I don't try to wake up early, I just naturally wake up early around 6 a.m. every morning. Um, now, I don't have a million dollars. I'm not some big rich kid. I don't have a million bucks. And I don't even know what I would do with more money. I love where I live now. I wouldn't want to move. I love the clothes I wear now. I wouldn't want to wear different clothing. I love, I love the food that I eat. I wouldn't want to eat different food. I love the gear that I'm using. I love this Canon camera. I love this microphone. I love this tripod. I love, I love everything I've got. You know, I love everything I've got. And I think that that's 
not because of the things that I have. I think that's just a practice that I've practiced. I think that's just a practice that I've practiced, I suppose. It's just, I'm, I've practiced gratitude for so long that I'm, I've been a, it's really easy for me to be grateful for things. It's really easy for me to be grateful for things because I've practiced being grateful. You're not grateful for things because of the circumstance. You're grateful for things because you've practiced being grateful for things. So, whatever I got now, I'm grateful for. Some people might say, oh, this can is not good enough, this microphone's not good enough, the clothes you got aren't new enough, the place you live isn't brand new enough, it's, it's, it, it's a bit like, it's a bit noisy, you could do better, but we we'll always want to upgrade, upgrade, upgrade. And um, being dissatisfied in life is cool, but it's very important to be happy with what you've got. So you can be dissatisfied with what you've got, but never unhappy. You always want to be happy with what you've got, but never satisfied. How's that? So this camera, I admit, I'm not totally satisfied with the camera I've got, but I love it. I'm not totally satisfied with this lens that I've got, but I love it. And uh, I'm not totally satisfied with most things in my life, but I love the life that I live. And that's just a practice of gratitude. So I don't know what I would do if, even if I had a million dollars. And I think in the past I used to freak out and think, how am I gonna earn a million dollars? I wanna be a millionaire, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, what for? You just wanna, you, by, the, by the time you're on your deathbed and you got 10 seconds left to live, you're probably gonna think, did I live a happy life? Was I happy? Did I experience moments of intense joy? That's the most important thing, experiencing moments of intense joy and seeing that joy in others as well. Sharing that joy with others. That's what's most important. Not making millions of dollars, not being the healthiest person on the planet, not being the most successful person on the planet, not being the most accomplished person on the planet, not being the most famous person on the planet. That shit bogs people down. Being the richest person in the world, man, that could be stressful for very people. They gotta have to keep the status up. Being the most accomplished person in the world or being the fittest person in the world, that stuff can go away, right? You can lose your fitness. Being the strongest man on earth, whatever, you can lose that strength. That's, that, that can be taken from you. But what can't be taken from you is your memories of your, those, those intense moments of joy that you got to share with other people. The friendships, the relationships that you've built around those moments of joy. So to me, now at age 26, almost 27, the most important thing for me is just being happy and, and, and utilizing these tools and incorporating the wisdom that I've learned from other people and learning from my past mistakes and learning from my past successes, using that wisdom to teach others to be happy and to set the example of happiness, set the example of joy. One thing I wrote down, and I might happen right here in the, on this video right now, is like experiencing, like I wrote down 30 things I want in my life. And one of the things I wrote down is, uh, I'll, I'll say it word for word. I wrote down, I want to have... Um, a positive mood to the point of tears of joy at least once a week. That's how happy I want to be. That's how important it is for me. I want to be so happy that, I've, I'm, that I'm almost on the brink of crying. And that almost happened right there. I was like, I'm just so fucking passionate about being happy. And I, some people just think happiness comes to them. They're, they're, they're like, they're just going on, they're just reacting to things in life. They're like, well, I hope happiness is there. I hope happiness is there. I hope, I hope this person makes me happy or I hope this makes me happy or I hope if I just sit here and watch the next TV show to make me happy or fuck, I hope if I just keep scrolling, I'll be a little happier than the next scroll, the next scroll, the next scroll. Maybe like this link will make me happier. Shit outside you doesn't make you happy. It's the other way around. It's the going within that makes you happy. You've got to go within. It's altering your mental state that's going to make you happy. It's altering your focus. Focus equals feeling. Where you focus is what you're going to feel. So I focus on all the freedom I have in life, and I broadcast that out to YouTube, and I say, look, guys, like you can live your dream life. Because it's, like, it's just all I'm focusing on. I'm focusing on how much freedom I have, right? And then people on, on YouTube are like, oh, Ted Carr, he lives on a permanent vacation. And they make all these other assumptions along with that, which most of them are untrue. But it's true I live on a permanent vacation, but it's not true that I'm not working for it. I'm, I'm constantly working for it. But I'm doing the work that I enjoy doing. I'm doing, I'm doing the work that feels like play. I'm doing the stuff that I would love to do for free. When you get paid to do things that you would pay to do, that's when you know you're doing the right shit for yourself. That's when you know you're on the path. That's when you know that you're gonna set an amazing example for anyone and everyone who's watching you. Even though I'm doing what I love to do and I'm getting paid for it, whenever I see someone else do what they love to do, and even if they're not getting paid for it, I'm like, hell yeah. Seeing people do what they love to do is the ultimate, is the ultimate reflection of, of who and what you want to be doing. When you see someone doing what they love to do, you're like, yes, 
that is it, man. Like whether they're spinning fire, or they're doing a hula hoop, or they're doing a backflip, or they're making love with their wife or their husband, or they're playing with their child. When you do what you love to do, you set the example for other people so that they can do what they want to do. And when you're doing what you love to do, you're just in that state of joy, you're feeling good. Especially if you're making progress with it. You know, if you can keep doing what you love to do and you, and you can uh, see progress, you're getting better and better and better, you're improving at it, or you're making more gains, or you're hitting, you're hitting bigger targets, or you're hitting bigger numbers, or you're whatever, you're just feeling better about your craft. And you can make progress doing what you love to do, man, it is the best thing ever, right? It's just like, you're, you're getting that, um, that, that uh, I guess that secondhand reward or whatever. But the, even if you're not making progress, at least you're enjoying the process and that's what's super important. I make a lot of videos, a lot of them I never upload, even after I edit them. I'll put in hours in editing something, I just don't upload it because I'm like, ah, it's not good enough. But I enjoy the process. Writing as well, I'll write so many big notes, big status updates I want to put on Facebook. I never upload them because I'm like, fuck, it's not good enough. Or, I, I've changed the way I feel about that. But I'm not stressed about not having uploaded or shared it. At least I created it, at least I produced some content and I didn't have to share, you don't have to share all the content you produce. Just create some content. There's tons of beautiful artists out there who will never, you'll never see their art because they never share it. So just remember that. Just at least enjoy the process. I'm going to go back to my notes here so don't forget anything. Like I said, I took some notes to mention this video. Um, oh yeah, so how, how did this permanent vacation for me all begin? What was that catalyst moment? I would say it was when I watched the movie Faces of Death. I was in college, I was in a really dark place, I was smoking weed, I was smoking cigarettes, I was addicted to cigarettes, I was addicted to these, uh, these cigars, these cigarillos, these flavored cigars, and it'd be snowing, freezing cold, and no one in the world wants to go outside, it was in Edmonton, Canada, it's like close to minus 40, the snow is thick, snow is deep, and you're at home, you're stoned, you're lazy. But then this, you're, and you got to do your homework, you got to do your college homework. And you're like, I just want a cigarette. I can't focus, I need a cigarette now. And once the craving comes, once the craving came for me, I couldn't get it out of my head. Anytime a craving came for cigarette or food, whatever, I couldn't overcome the craving. The only way I could get rid of the craving was to give into it. So I'd have to get up and go across the street and buy some, buy some cigars, buy some cigarettes, and uh, just smoke it on my way back and just be like, oh, thank God, it feels so good. Now that the craving is gone, I can get back to work. Even though it derailed me for a bit, at least I'm focused now, I had my hit, I'm good to go. And I was in such a dark place at the time, I hated my college, I hated being addicted to cigarettes, I hated um, the cold temperature, and I just started watching these hateful videos, like Faces of Death. This was a, like a one hour documentary, 90 minute documentary, showing how things died. It showed people getting electrocuted in an electric chair. It showed monkeys getting pinned by the neck and getting hit on the hammer, hit with a hammer on the head until they were just like squirming to death. Um, it showed like alligators eating like, like tour guides, safari tour guides. It showed like um, robbers who like would rob a house and they'd get like shot with like a machine gun from the police. They put all these bullets in them. It just showed how things died. And then when it showed the cows in the slaughterhouse, that's when I was like, uh-uh. No fucking way am I gonna keep eating meat. I am done. 100% done. 100% done. 100%. Stop. Stop. Fuck. End this shit. End this shit. No, 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 no. No more, no more, no more, no more. I'm done with eating red meat. Done. I'm gonna be vegetarian. I didn't know vegetarian meant like no fish, no chicken. I was just like, no more red meat. Then I went on YouTube and found some role models. I was like, who out there is not eating red meat? So I did in vegetarian celebrities and up. Brad Pitt came, and up Angelina Jolie came, and up Leonardo DiCaprio came, and up all these other famous vegans came, or vegetarians came. I was like, wow, if it's good enough for them, it's gonna be good enough for me. So I stopped eating meat. And then I was like, I just made the first positive change in my life ever. And it felt so dang good. It felt so damn good knowing that I made a positive change in my life. And I did it, I did it, 100% me. I came across this decision on my own. No one told me to go vegan or vegetarian. I 100% did it on my own. And that felt so good to know that I'm making a positive change. And it just spiraled from there. And the thing that really took me to the next level, so that, that, that was a spark, that was a catalyst watching that documentary, but what took me to the next level was listening to audiobooks. Was listening to audiobooks. I realized that the more I listened to certain audiobooks, the better I felt. And the better I felt, the more my outlook on life changed. And the more my outlook on life changed, the more my life changed. When my outlook on life changed, my life changed. It was a direct correlation.
The more positive my outlook was, the more positive my life was. And so to this day, to this day, I only want to consume content that's going to make me feel like I'm vibing at a higher level. So when people talk shit about me on the internet, they make hate videos on me, I can't watch it because I know it's going to bring me to a low vibe. You can just hear the low vibe in their voice in the first 10 seconds of a video. I'm just like, I'm not watching that. I want to be vibing high because when I'm vibing high, life is good. When you feel good, life is good. When you feel like shit, life is shit. The most important thing in life is how you feel. If you feel like crap, everything in life is crap. Even people around you hanging out, they're gonna feel like crap because you, you, you feel like crap. But if you're feeling amazing, everyone you come in contact with is gonna feel amazing as well. The biggest blessing on earth is to feel great. Feel great. And if you feel like crap, learn from how you're feeling, learn why you're feeling like crap and then alter that so that you can feel good in the future. So there's, there's a few things you can do every single day to feel good and I mentioned that in a few other videos. I'll mention that in another video. I don't wanna go into it now, but there's like four or five things you can do every single day that guarantee you feel good. And I'll just give you two of them right now. One of them is to meditate. Meditate for five, ten minutes every single day. And the other one is to be grateful, just to say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. If you say thank you nonstop for two minutes, there's no way you're gonna be in a bad mood after. You're gonna be so high vibing, man. All right? So just remember that. Um, so yeah, that, that, that's how I got started. I, would, I watched that documentary and then I started getting into audiobooks. And I would just listen to the same audiobooks on repeat over and over and over and over and over again. Why did I listen to the same audiobook on repeat? Because it worked. The audiobook worked. Why would you go to the gym and say, hey, look, the, the doing bicep curls, it, it made my bicep sore. It actually made my bicep grow a little bit, but I don't need to go anymore because I already went to the gym. No, bro. You say, it worked. I'm going to go again and get even more results. It worked. I'm going to go again and get more, even more results. It works. I'm going to go again and get even more results. So with the audiobooks, I say, wow, this audiobook made me think this thought. It made me take this action as a result of feeling that way it made me feel. I'm going to listen to it again. And the more I, I just kept listening. I just kept listening. And everything in my life kept changing. Um, and now that, I, yeah, now that I look back, man, it's like 100% because of where my thoughts were. My thoughts were changing and my life was changing as a result. So that's how it all began for me. Um, and you can do the same if you'd like to as well. You know, just pick a good audiobook. I'll recommend four or five right here real quickly. I'd recommend, um, I'd recommend uh, The Strangest Secret by Earl Nightingale. You can watch that on YouTube right now. It's like 20 minute long. The Strangest Secret by Earl Nightingale. I'd recommend Psycho-Cybernetics by Dr. Maxwell Maltz. Amazing audiobook. Psycho-Cybernetics by Dr. Maxwell Maltz. It's all about changing your self-image, seeing yourself as the person you want to be. I'd recommend The Compound Effect by Darren Hardy. It's a practical, inspirational book on long-term thinking, the benefits of long-term thinking and long-term execution. And I'd recommend The Law of Attraction by Esther and Jerry Hicks, just so you understand how it all works, you know, thoughts become things. And I would recommend The Astonishing Power of Emotions to realize that really there is nothing more important than your emotions. Your emotions are the dictator of your life experience. Like I said, when you feel like shit, life is shit. Life is actually horrible. The stocks are down, the clouds are out, babies are crying. And when you're feeling good, whew, babies are cute, the air is warm, stocks are up, you're feeling good about things, you don't even care if the stocks are down because you're feeling good. Like it doesn't matter what's happening on the outside because you feel good. So your perspective changes, you get a perception shift happening and everything is good. So let's just finish off this video here real quickly here. Um, anything else? Yeah, so what am I doing now? What am I doing now on a day-to-day -day basis? Um, there's a few things I'm working on now. I'm working on my app still. I've got an app that's um, been being built for a while now. It's an app that's gonna connect people who wanna learn from each other. That's a really cool app that I'm super pumped on. I've put a lot of my time and energy into that. Um, it's just taking a lot longer than usual than it should, I think, or than it should. It's just taking a lot longer than I thought it would take, but um, I think that's just because I'm doing it mostly by myself. I don't really have a whole team on it. I don't really have a partner who wants to uh, you know, put as much time and energy in it as I do. Um, so there's the app I'm working on. I'm working on my fitness gains. I'm working on getting as, as strong and fit and healthy as possible in the gym. And I'm working on um, getting people to these festivals. I want people to come to the Denmark Fruit Festival, the Danish Fresh Food Festival. I want people to come to the UK Fruit Festival. And I want people to come to the Woodstock Fruit Festival. If you guys want to come to any of those events, I can give you a 10% to $100 discount on those. Just check the description in the link below. Check the links in the description below and you'll get all the information for that. Um, and I'm also working on uh, putting together another retreat in the near future, either a retreat in Canada or a retreat in Hawaii. 
Uh, I'm not sure where yet, but I'm also working on some filming, some videos. I want to put together some short films. I want to put together a documentary. I want to put together some music videos. Um, I'm working to. I'm working on making my YouTube channel way, way, way better. You know, I've got, um, I've got time. I've got energy. I've got resources. I've got friends. It's just about getting clear on what I want. So, it's that's the big thing I'm working on right now. It's just clarity. I want to. Well, one of my fantasies. I've got a fantasy this summer is to spend a week offline. I'm gonna. The video's gonna shut off right now in a sec. It's, they only record for like 25 minutes, so I want to stop it and start again. Um, one of my fantasies for the summer is to go offline for like seven days and just spend seven days organizing all of my files. Uh, I've got so many files since I was like 10 years old. I started like saving little files, folders here and there. And I want to organize all like my, my writings, all of my recordings, all of my videos, everything. I just want to get super clear on it all. And then... Um, pump it out to the world and say, hey, look what I wrote, here's some thoughts. Put it in a nice, organized, neat fashion and give it to the world. And um, team up with some people. There's, there's some books I want to put out, there's some audiobooks I want to put out, some video courses I want to put out, but I don't want to do it by myself. So if you're the type of person who wants to help me put together a video course or put together um, an ebook or put together a training program or a retreat or whatever, or make a music video together or whatever, reach out to me and send me your portfolio. I, I really only want to work with people who've got either um, an, an extensive portfolio that I really like or that are willing to put together a portfolio right away and just say, hey, look, I'm not that experienced yet, but um, I want to be, and so here's some of the work that I've done in the past week or so just to show you. Whatever it is, just show me your portfolio. It would be great to see. You can get an idea of what a portfolio should look like by checking out my website. Go to tedcar.ca. You can see my photos and my videos there. Um, and, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just... I'm just Really effing excited for what's around the corner. There's something really exciting about not knowing what's around the corner, but believing that it's something great. And that's how I feel right now. I'm just, I know something great is around the corner. I don't know what, but I know it's going to be amazing. It's going to be better than I could have ever imagined. Because my life right now is better than I could have ever imagined. Like, when you're a little kid, you think, oh, it'd be great to have a mansion. It'd be great to have... Um, you know, a million women. It'd be great to have a million dollars. It'd be great to have a Ferrari. It'd be great to, have, great to have a Lamborghini. It'd be great to have a big pool in your backyard. It'd be great to have all these companies. And then it, it hopefully, if you're lucky, like myself, I'm very lucky, very fortunate, um, you realize that it's way more important that you feel good, that you feel happy. You know, accomplishments... They may get you by, they may get you through life, these little achievements that you experience, but at the end of your life, man, at the end of your day, you want to go to bed feeling like, fuck yes, dude, that was an amazing life. I treated everyone I knew the way I'd want to be treated. I spoke my truth. I stood for something. I inspired thousands of people just by being myself. I put out good content uh, that's going to live on. You know, maybe maybe I, I had to have a few kids who are going to carry on my genes, or maybe I've adopted a few kids who are going to carry on my, my wisdom and share that. Whatever it is, maybe do both. Maybe have some kids, maybe adopt some kids. Um, you have some best friends, you have some long-term friends. Whatever, you just impacted the world in a good way because you felt good about what you're doing, and you didn't succumb to anyone else's low vibe. Um, that's what's really important to me now at this age anyway. And uh, I can't see how that's going to change because feeling good really, um, as far as I can see right now at this age, is the foundation of everything. If you feel good, you can build from there. If you feel like crap, everything's going to be like crap. So, sorry, this video got kind of dark. I should change the ISO or something. Wow, it's bright. Well, toodaloo. Change the ISO, bro. There we go. Yeah, that would have been way better. Sorry about that. But anyways, uh, this lens is sick. This is the... 11 to 20 mil. This is like zoomed in all the way. And then if you want to go wide, boom, we get lots of room. Zoom wide. Okay, peace out. Thanks for watching. Exactly. Work now, pay off later, you know? Yeah. I might do a month now so I could have That's right. three months later. You know? Work hard, play hard.